what up? We about to get this show cracking, yo. Black culture, what up? Ah, right, we getting started, baby. Who else? Who else? We getting this show cracking. Let's go. What's up? What's up, everybody? What's up? Yo, I'm in here from early. We in here for Black Culture, The Breakdown, Season 2, Episode 2. I am your boy, Jersey. What up? Yo, that was that DJ Lil Man in the background. I gotta keep playing it. Yo, at the end, they call my name. So let me just play that back for you just so y'all can hear that. They definitely call my name, huh? Oh, well, what up, everybody? I see you. What up, Betty? What's up, Omar Laura? DJ Lil Man in the hurt, the house early. What up? All right, let's get DJ Lil Man on the live. We about to get the show cracking. Hold on, baby, they gotta call my name first. They gotta call my name first. Yeah, It's a break dance. Hey. DJ Lil Man, we getting lit tonight. What up, everybody? We getting lit. What's up, baby boy? What's going on, man? Welcome to Black Coach of the Breakdown, man. <laughs> man, we got DJ Lil Man in the house, man. This is a New Jersey club level. And I definitely got a shout out a Jersey King. I see a Jersey King, bro, and I had him on the show for season two. What's up, man? I see that. It's working, man. Putting it together, making, making things make sense. You know how I go. Know how it go, man. First of all, everybody in the comments, make sure you happy birthday, DJ Lil Man, because <laughs> they just passed. So make sure you drop that happy birthday and them and, and them birthday candles for the king on the live. Yeah, all right. Yeah, bro. bro welcome, to the show, man. The show is all about the black excellence, recognizing where the coach is at, where it used to be, and where we can have it going. Uh, yeah. so, so I feel like in terms of, I'm a choreographer and a dancer, I'm a creative director. And okay. graduated from Union High School, man. I did a lot of parties in Elizabeth, a lot of parties in Jersey. Shout out to Union, New Jersey, man. That's what's up. <laughs> and right there, you know, I grew up on, grew up, man, battling in your chat, your swing that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know what I'm saying? So I got to definitely figure out, you know, nobody, I feel like I never, don't anybody really tap into DJ club DJs and really get their story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, you always hear about uh, different people who vocalists and you hear about a couple of the producers, but they don't ever really tap into the DJs. Definitely not. So then tap us in then, man. Bring us back to the beginning. How did you get into the game? Damn. Um, this is 2020? Golly. Got to go back to 2003, 2004. Okay. Um, you know what I mean? I got tired of buying music from DJ Tamil. I'm going to just be honest. Like, I was buying all the Jersey Club. Well, it wasn't even Jersey Club at the time. I was buying Baltimore music from him. Um, that was at the very beginning of my DJing career anyway. I was buying mad Baltimore records from him, unmixed, so I could play at the clubs and stuff like that. So I just got tired of doing that. And, um, you know, I got tired of buying it. And I said, I'm going to start making my own shit, like. So you always understood, like, ah, right, you got to kind of create your own way. Definitely, definitely. To kind of hire somebody else for a long time. So you and you know what? That's how my that's how I got as popular as I am now. It's because I got it. I had to create my own way. Even with, you know, creating this Jersey Club, it wasn't easy for me. But, and the reason why it wasn't easy is because I didn't send none of my music to people. I played it at my own parties. I threw my own parties. I was my own promoters. I created my own lane for me to be yeah. able to say. I want to be the producer as well as I want to be the promoter and the DJ of my own stuff. So I had a yeah. crazy advantage over a lot of the stuff that go on with Jersey Club because I was throwing my own parties. Nobody could top the parties. I was getting 2,000, yeah. you know what I'm saying, 2,500 kids in there. <laughs> and if you don't know, you could go on YouTube and search up DJ Little Man Party and it'll show you. I got parties from 20, 2008, 2006, 2005. I'm talking about thousands of children 
just having a having a good time, just turning up. Shout out to my dude Kairu in the building, team Kairu. What up, what up, Kairu? Listen, I was definitely with them kids in 2006, 2000. I, I graduated in 09. Now, okay. I was definitely, we in the same, that's that era when you was <laughs> I was in there. Uh, you know, I even battled, I was watching some of your videos and just doing research, and I was like, yo, I battled some of them cats, the guy with the dreads. I battled him before, you know. I think that was Joffy you probably talking about. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's just always a small world to see everybody come back full circle. And, and that's dope that you always put on for dancers and always kind of gave dancers an opportunity. Definitely. To you and make money, show off the she book. Do all that. Yeah, the dancers, is a, it plays a major role with this Jersey Club thing, too. You know what I mean? Shout out to my choreographers, uh, Team Little Man, YFD. Yeah. Shout out to Annie. Shout out to Joffy, Urkel. Um, some of those those three guys really played the major role with Team Little Man and all of that stuff like that. So, you know, shout out to them, man. They're doing successful things, great things, doing their own classes, touring around and, you know, making money. I think that was one of the most important things to not only put them in the videos, but also uh, give them a platform to be able to generate revenue. Um, because, you know, that's the biggest thing right now, being able to generate money, being able to generate revenue. Uh, you know, popularity is cool, but popularity don't pay the bills. That's a fact, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Before we before we get off this live, I definitely want to bring it back to something because I have a school out here in New York, you know. Okay. Dance classes, and I definitely want to. I ain't never did a Jersey Club class. I think that would be lit to get some of your, 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 your dances out here. To do I got them. I got them. I set them up. I connect them with you. Actually, when we get off the live. Yeah. I'll send them to your DM and stuff like that so you can, you know, connect with them. And that's, like I said, there's always a, a, a good way to do marketing. New York is one of our uh, second homes. I did a lot of stuff in New York. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, man, New York is definitely, in terms of the grind, the hustle is definitely where it's at. But I want to hear you jump back into how you actually got into Jersey Club music. And actually define what Jersey Club music is. What is that? Jersey Club is um a lot of bass, remix, samples, you know. Okay. Uh, I would say it's bed squeaks, but it's not bed squeaks. It's actually a rocking chair. A lot of people think it's bed squeaks, gotcha. but it's a rocking chair. Um, that's it, really, just remixing everything, creating different shit, you know what I'm saying? Just taking whatever's hot, turning it into something dance. Okay, you know okay. I mean? Dope, dope, okay. So for everybody that's trying to get into Jersey Club, you hear where it is named bed squeaks, it's a rocking chair. Okay. Yeah. So make sure I get it right. So now, let me ask you this. Do you feel like Jersey Club DJ gets the credit they deserve? Do I feel like Jersey Club DJs get the credit? Yes. Um, I can't really speak for everybody else. I'm the DJ and the producer, so I kind of get all the credit either way I go. I'm the DJ, the producer, and the artist. <laughs> you know? I feel like you get the credit that you deserve for everything that you put into the game. Uh... Probably not, but I don't, I'm not looking for it, mm. you know? I'm not looking for the credit. I don't want to be the GOAT. I don't want to be the number one. I just want to be able to create new lanes and generate revenue, mm. uh, show people how to really get to this money, because it's a, it's a lot of money in this Jersey Club stuff. So do I feel like I'm getting the recognition I deserve? Probably not, but do I care? Nah, I really don't. Got you, got you. Well, man, on Black Coach, we definitely give you your credit on here. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, man. Uh, definitely one of the, the, the kings of Jersey Club. You know, there's a few of y'all that definitely stand out. Even just, I did a lot. I've been, I danced with Beyonce, I danced with Ciara. You know what I'm saying? But for me, I still go back and play. Even with my students, we, we play our Jersey Club. You know what I'm saying? Like, we go definitely, back. definitely. <laughs> now, now, let's now tapping in, tapping in real quick into your favorite DJ Lil Man track. Or oh. done. With, if you have Pick one to play for the rest of your life. Which one is it? I'm going to go with Bunny Hop. Bunny Hop. My very friend. They said, my, well, one song that I've had the chance to play over and over and over every day of my life that I created, I got to go with Bunny Hop. Yeah. Team Little Anthem is cool, but I hear it all the time. I'm Bunny Hop. I'm going to go with Bunny Hop. Dang, dang. Okay, Bunny Hop. All right, that's good. Like, I like the way, uh, shout out to DJ Beloved, he mixed it, he engineered it, it sound like if you put the headphones and you hear it flaring left to right, it's, it's real creative. It was a lot of time and energy in that joint, so Bunny Hop is definitely be my number one pick. Okay, okay, all right, Bunny Hop. All right, Bunny Hop. I don't think I know Bunny Hop too much. Yeah. I need, I need actually, actually, can I put that on real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bunny it's, Hop is definitely, like, my number one go-to. Like, it's on Spotify? Yes, it is, it is. 
I'm about to put it yeah, on. Bunny Hop is uh, DJ Beloved. We got the beat from, I think, K Shiz did the beat. And the original beat, it sound nothing like the the, the beat that we, re we recorded on. So we went in the studio and we created the beat. And uh, that's definitely my number one pick. I just love the way it come on, the vibe, all of that. Let me see it a little bit. Nah, it's not coming up on Spotify. Oh, let me see. I think I found it. This is Jerry that's crazy right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I said it's crazy. Wells, yeah, it's crazy. Wells, movie brothers. Wells, Jersey. Yeah. Rock left and rock right. Rock left and rock Let's right. Go. Rock left and rock right. Rock left and rock Let's right. Go. Rock left and rock right. Yeah. Rock left and rock right. Yeah. Rock left and rock right. already going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I take Bunny Hop over every. I, I created a lot of different songs, but Bunny Hop is definitely like okay. my go-to, personally, my favorite, one of my favorites. Because it was a lot of time in engineering into that. Yeah, um, yeah. That was a little crazy time. I was in between managements at the time, so at the end of the song, you would hear me talking my shit, like you know what I'm saying. But so it was kind of like a rough time for me in that time. But I kind of figured it out, and that song actually did great for me. So definitely, but nah, that song is definitely like, man. Comics is going crazy right now. Straight mm -hmm. fire like, emojis, fire. <laughs> Like, squat splits, shout out to squat splits. <laughs> she's about to be over here next talking about some tracks. Even she she went to Rutgers. So she oh, yeah? know all about DJ Little Man music. You about to be on here chopping up in a second after this segment. But um jumping back into how you do your music and you collaborate. You just mentioned you collaborate just now with somebody on that track. Um who's like your dream collaboration uh, that you feel like you haven't gotten a chance to work with yet? It's crazy. Somebody asked me this the other day. It ain't really too many people I didn't get a chance to work with in this culture. So, um, I don't work with uh, uh, DJ Class who did uh, "I Got Them Diamonds on My Neck." I don't. I don't work with a lot of different people. So, it ain't really too many people in the culture I didn't get a chance to work with. Uh, probably. Um, if anything, I probably want to be want to create with one of the artists or one of the mainstream artists. You know, probably get a chance to re recreate another drill uh, or create or produce a beat for like Sierra or somebody like that. Just something like that. Mainstream, real crazy that could take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I ain't really too big on, uh, you know, rappers rapping over the Jersey Club because it's supposed to be for dance. You can't rap and dance. It's kind of like a hard mixture. Mm -hmm. uh, even though Trap Club is cool, but, you know, just trying to figure out. We're trying to find a way where Jersey Club could fit in with the rap culture as well. Definitely. Now, let, let me ask you this. In terms of, like, someone like Missy Elliott that definitely always pays homage to Jersey Club or Baltimore Club, and we won't get into that Jersey Baltimore, but for someone like, someone like a Missy Elliott, how do you feel about her incorporating a lot of, like, Jersey Club into what she does? Well, uh, she does a lot of work with Jay Hood, so I, I'm not surprised, which is good. He's another Jersey love legend, um, so he she does a lot of work with him, so that it's only right to incorporate some Jersey Club into what she do because she got one of the, you know, hottest, uh, youngest producers that produced Jersey Club with her. So, I mean, it's on the same thing with Sierra. She got, uh, oh, what's his name, Telly Tells, who did that uh, uh, oh, Level Up beat, which originally a lot of people don't know that the song was called F It Up. Uh, originally, it was a DJ Telly Tells called Fuck It Up, oh. the Fuck It Up Challenge, and then he recreated it and she called it Level Up. Okay. Yeah, so a lot of people didn't know that the original beat came from that. Bree, what's up, Bree? Yeah, okay, man. Hey, hey, little man dropping some um some inside scoop on y'all, y'all. It, it was really not supposed to be level up. Let's see <laughs> that good morning America spin on it, all right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she collected them coins. I <laughs> get to that bag. <laughs> so now let me ask you this. Do you feel like as a black man in this industry, uh, like the music industry, the DJ club, the busy club is really like a, I'm going to say a genre of music. Do you feel like it is a space or a spot that solidifies like as a genre or do you feel like it still hasn't been through enough yet to get a space like that? 
Um, I feel like we in the works of becoming, we already a genre within in-house. Um, I feel like we still got a lot of work to do in order to become a mainstream genre. Um, but I feel like every mainstream artist, they come to us to be able to help them. Um, and what I mean by that is you got a lot of rappers or a lot of artists who song isn't doing too good, who may need that extra push. And that's what Jersey Club coming at. So we'll create a Jersey Club version to it and we'll get kids to dance to it. Now it's bubbling. They want to know what the original song is. You know what I mean? So that's just a part of marketing and campaigning. We call it visual campaign because when artists aren't doing good on labels, labels are reaching out to Jersey Club, especially me anyway. I get a lot of remixes that I do for labels uh, who artists isn't doing the best, but they want us to do a visual campaign. And I can't do a visual campaign with the original if it's not doing good. So we got to create a Jersey Club version to it, which turns it into a, you know, gives it some, a push. The kids could dance to it as a bop. You know, it, it comes from being so ratchet and crazy to now as a bop, then we turn it up with it, like, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, it, it goes like that or whatever. Drew, what's up, Drew? Okay, so now, I'm trying to figure out, because, you know, TikTok took over this whole everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> so now, with Jersey Club kind of, like, being at the forefront of, like, TikTok. Yeah, I'm about to say, we took over TikTok, have you? You know what I'm saying? So now, I feel like I can see why labels would now be reaching out and really want to tap into that, because they want everybody to TikTok. Yeah. So it only makes sense to have the regular version, the trap version, the Jersey Club version. The exactly. Different variations. And that's the whole game plan. The game plan is to not only take over the the Spotify's and the streams, but to also take over the all social medias. You know what I mean? To the point where we want to be able to have Jersey Club on every platform consistently to the point where people are going to be like, what the fuck is this type of music? Like, what type of genre is this? You know what I'm saying? So for all, so for the rap versions and all of the people that's doing these little dances to the rap versions, we're going to create club versions to it too. Got you, got you. Okay. You know what I mean? Got you. So now let's get into this, this, this dilemma. Jersey club versus Baltimore club, right? <laughs> yeah. What put down to us if you can, the quickest way you know how to, what the actual difference is between both of the sounds. Um, so Baltimore Club is a lot of claps and horns. If you listen to a lot of Baltimore, they got a lot of claps and horns in it. Um, it's, the beat pattern is the same. You know what I mean? There's nothing different. I, I think our bass lines are a little bit different. Uh, and I think it's more so because our producers actually create those bass lines and stuff like that. But the beat pattern is completely different. I mean, the same. Um, we don't use claps in Jersey Club. That's one of the biggest things. We don't use claps. We try not to use claps. If we do, it's not as throughout the beat. Uh, but we try not to use claps, and we try not to uh, use a lot of horns and sounds. We based on bass, synths, samples, okay. uh, you know, chair, rocking chairs and stuff like that. But we try not to use claps at all in our joints. Shout out to Frost on check and Frost, what up? Okay, okay. So now, is there, like, there's no, there's no between Jersey Club and Baltimore Club. You say, is it a beef between them? There's no beef. No, no, no. It's no beef. I mean, people who know Jersey Club know that it was originated in Baltimore. Uh, well, it actually was originated in Chicago. Chicago blessed the Baltimore. Baltimore somehow split it between Philly and Jersey. Um, you know, stuff like that or whatever the case may be. So, uh, but uh, no, there's no beef between Baltimore. We actually got a lot of love. Shout out to, you know, Baltimore. We had a dance in here. Terry, I don't know if he's still in here. Uh, shout out to the Baltimore dancers. We love them. They are, they're, they are our brothers. We kind of, the dancers created this bond amongst each other, which caused the producers from different, you know, from those states to kind of, you know, get together as well. So the dancers created that unity within the culture, and then that further out and created a unity amongst the producers and DJs and stuff like that. I know Tamil had a great relationship between a lot of the Baltimore DJs and stuff, but a lot of the next generation who generated or oh, who made Jersey Club didn't have that direct connection between Baltimore and Jersey Club DJs. So the dancers were unified, came together. They drove out the Jersey. We did videos. We drove out to Baltimore. We did videos. And then that right there showing that unity amongst the dance culture brought the, the culture as far as DJs and producers together. So if you ever look at the Baltimore dances and stuff, you see they dance to some Jersey club as yeah. well as they dance to some Baltimore. And if you look at some Jersey, you see us doing some Baltimore dances as well as doing Jersey club. So they kind of bridged that gap, which was a great thing. We needed that. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> Listen yo, yo, he just dropped some history on y'all. I hope y'all tapped into the history. <laughs> From Chicago, it got split. It blessed with you know Baltimore and Jersey. Yeah, it came. It was first uh, go 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 music. Chicago go go. Yeah. And then uh, I don't, somehow I don't know the history between the Chicago and Baltimore. 
Um, but somehow Baltimore came in. They did their thing. In between Baltimore, Philly was blessed with some, and then Jersey gotcha. uh, was blessed by DJ Tamil and all of that and brought it this way. So yeah. it worked out. Well, that's definitely dope. Appreciate you even knowing the history of it to even be able to. Of course, you got. Listen, you can't be a part of something and don't know the history. More, you gotta know the yeah. history. For the fact, I do your your guy. Yo, how important is it to know what the hell you're doing and be dope at what you do? How important is like just? It's, it, it's very important because somebody can always g check you. You can always get checked. Somebody can always come up to you and ask you a question about something that you know you need to know about. Absolutely. History is important. Yeah. You know what I mean? Knowledge yeah. is power. Definitely. The history is important. You got to be able to know your history. You got to know where you're going, but you got to know where it came from as well. Dude, 100% facts. Man, you would definitely get your gems, man. Now, hey, how important, last question, how important is dance a lot, but I really want to tap into this now before we close out. How important is dance to Jersey Club, and, and how important was dance pushing your career, you know what I'm saying? Just just being a part of your career and just rocking with dancers, dancers rocking with you. How important was that bridge? Dance is me, period. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't be anywhere without having the actual visual, uh, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that or whatever the case may be. So um, the dancers played a major role in my career uh, from day one. And I knew that, you know, with me being a, uh, a vocalist or a producer slash artist, that I'm going to need to have a visual to go and match this audio that I'm putting out. And in order for me to create that visual, I definitely needed to have dancers to be able to put that visual into play. Um, yes. I, I create that dance, that line dance, that fun music, you know, not that uh, the music that only get played in the clubs. We want to be able to be played at baby showers, backyards, you know what I mean, block parties, councilman shows, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. I want to be able to, to play those joints like that. So having those dances were a major... Uh, uh, good look, you know what I mean? That's why I always big up the dancers and show them love. And uh, again, I, I actually help them to get a platform where they can generate revenue. Now they're making money on their own and they're doing their own thing, making sure that they yes. eat and their family. So overall, that was my, my, my primary goal. And if anybody on my team would tell you, when they all started Instagram, everybody has zero followers. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of my dancers now got like 60, 70,000 followers where to the point where if they wanted to post their own little show or something like that, they can, they got followers and people to be able to support what they're doing and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So the dancers, just, I wouldn't be where I am without the dancers. So shout out to all the team little man, shout out to Jersey Finest, shout out to uh, EVO, YFD, all the dance, all the dance teams out there. Um, uh, 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 Envy, all the old school dancers, whoever, all the dancers are from every generation, from the beginning to now, they played a major role in everything that I'm doing. Yeah, man, that's super dope, man. And listen, we respect people that always put out for the dancers. Yo, dancers work, man, hard. No, yeah. Dancers work extremely uh, hard and get paid bare minimum. Let's be clear, hey. right? So I think that that was one of my biggest things, too, because at the time, there was so many dancers to be able to pay everybody, mm -hmm. right? So my goal was to be able to create a platform for them to be able to generate revenue in the midst of me hitting them here and there or taking them on trips. I couldn't compensate everybody. Like I had over like 27 dancers, so I couldn't pay everybody $200, $300 a show. So what I'll say is, all right, well, boom, y'all did a great job here. We're going to take a vacation to the Poconos. I paid for the whole entire trip. Everybody just come eat and chill and things like that. So they didn't always get paid monetarily, but they always got a vacation or a trip. Or and then for bookings, whenever we got bookings, they got paid like that as well. And then just you know, just making sure we keep their uh, Instagrams and their platforms all at a at a, a uniform and make them look good and stuff like that. Photo shoots, always make sure that they have photo shoots, videos and visuals. It's some videos that I even put out that I'm not even the the producer on, but because they wanted to do that, I wanted to be able to make sure that they had that visual for them to be able to use that for marketing purposes to get other bookings. So. It, it, it always didn't work out with me giving them a dollar, but it worked out in a way for them to be able to help them get more revenue off their platform, though. Yo, yo. And we got to I want to do something, like, innovative. I, like, how dope would it be to even do a dance class with, like, a Baltimore, Jersey uh, club, you know, a Jersey dancing together and, and do a class like that so they can learn from both the different styles? The Listen, style. all you got to do is grab the location. I'll put the dance. I'm a, after I get off live, I'm going to tag some DJs in, which, I mean, some uh, dancers with you. Um, you get the location and we make that thing happen. We have some Baltimore. Have a studio. <laughs> okay, so let's put it together. Let's get your studio rocking and rolling. All we need to do is make sure everybody fill out their COVID forms, 
<laughs> and make sure they sign off on those release forms. Okay. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And we get to go from there. Most definitely, man. We could definitely tap into that, man. We're going to talk offline. Like, uh, next week coming up, or no, a few days, you know D. Woods from Dandy King from, from back in the day? Yeah, I know Woods. I know Woods. Oh, well, she's, she's doing a class. She's teaching a dance class, I think, next week, if I'm not mistaken. I got to check the calendar. But we get people coming all the time, so I think it would be dope to get you in the fold, man. And, yeah. And, and I, rock out. I definitely will put my number in your inbox mm -hmm. after this so you can hit me directly and be able to put some things together. All right, most deaf, man. Well, bro, we are definitely out of time, but, man, do not be a stranger on the show. We're going to tap in with you. Anytime you got a project you're pushing, you got to pull up on the show and promote it, bro. Appreciate it. I know for sure next time we'll be able to do a lot more promoting. We need to get at least hundreds of thousands of people in here next time. But yeah. we'll put that thing, we'll put that together. Give us two weeks or something like that. We'll put it all together. We'll got this room packed out and have a great conversation about dance. Definitely, man. We'll just get it all together, bro. We're we'll definitely tapping. You already know what time it is. I see where you at with it, man. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> I see where you definitely at. though. All right, man. Well, well, appreciate you. Let everybody know where they can find you and if anything you should be on the lookout for. Hey, man, listen, all my platforms, everything is DJ Little Man 973. Um, I even got an OnlyFans. <laughs> nah, I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. Nah, but you can find me on all platforms, DJ Little Man 973, YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, you know, and uh, I got a couple of projects I'm putting out, a couple of videos. I'm actually going to be releasing a video tomorrow, a snippet, just a little snippet. And uh, again, shout out to the dancers and stuff like that. So uh, shout out to Phil Wright, too. I actually spoke to him uh, a couple of days ago, too. Good dude. Great brother. Dope. Great brother. About to get Phil on here too and chop it up. He's definitely dope, man. We gonna Great brother. Great brother. And I'm all about connecting everybody, black people united. Yo, if everybody do what they do and be dope and collaborate, we could take over this whole shit. You heard? Yeah, look, I agree. Man, we out of here, man. We're gonna talk soon, man. We're gonna catch you soon, bro. All right, brother. Stay safe, man. Stay safe, bro. DJ Lil, man, everybody. <laughs> That was DJ Lil, man. Come on. Talk about conversations. We're talking about revolutionary music that's really going to change the game, yo. Jersey Club and Baltimore Club, just club music in general, definitely got its own lane, and it needs to be recognized. You understand? About to get Squats and Split on the live. It's time for your girl Squats and Split. Yo, the comments is going crazy. What up, everybody? What's up? What's up? Hey. Guys, how we feeling? Feeling great. I feel like I talk to you all the time, so like this is this is nothing new. <laughs> Definitely not nothing new. Well, welcome to Black Culture to Break Down, episode two of season two. First of all, I just want to say I'm so proud of you, Jersey, because you are crushing it out here. Okay, when y'all come on here and y'all watch this, I know everything looks all perfect, but y'all don't understand. There's a lot of work that goes into producing this show. Okay. Okay, that's a fact. Yes. So, yes. <laughs> uh, but it's definitely always a blessing to be on here with you. Layla saying, hey, Miss Naeem. Hey. Yo, yes. that, can we actually read some of the comments? Actually, Naeem, I see the comments is actually kind of going crazy already. Okay, uh, okay. You can just do, read some of the comments, actually. And, uh, let me see. Oh, oh, so, First, oh, I, w I oh, just want to give a big <laughs> shout out. First, to DJ Little Man, happy belated birthday, which is amazing. So, shout out to that. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So, I'm like, uh, I see from here, you said she's teaching this Wednesday. DJ Little Man, if you're still in here, yeah, D. Woods yes. is teaching this day. Um, they said, it's a movie, brothers. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Oh, David said, also, Squats and Splits is teaching on Wednesday, okay? Yes! Valentine's that the class, y'all. We, we getting sexy. Real yeah. slow. Uh, uh, yeah, he said, thank you, beautiful. Now, <laughs> no problem. now, first of all, Naima, let the people know who you are and what you do know. Go. All right, you guys. My name is Naima. I'm a professional dancer and choreographer in New York City, former NBA dancer for the Philadelphia 76ers, also group fitness instructor, and I have my own brand called House of Pumps, where I teach heels classes in Brooklyn. I do private parties. I do choreography for artists. I'm just out here. I'm just, I'm just a straight-up boss. Boss. Yes. <laughs> That's a whole fact. All right. So with all that busyness that you got going on, how important is it for you to be around like minded? Oof. Right? Talk to me about that. Oh, I see Frida in the video. She said, Hey Frida. First of all, she said, A baddie. You are a baddie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. To be around like minded people is so important. Like 
and I'm speaking from a business standpoint, but this goes across the board for whatever it is that you do. It is so important because everyone is not going to understand what you're doing. They're not going to see your vision of what you're doing. And when people don't understand what you're doing, they can't really relate to you. The conversations are different and the motivation isn't there, you know? So for example, you know, Jersey could attest to this. December, I was very just relaxed. I was like, it's still the pandemic. I can't do this. And he called me. He was like, yes. are you dumb? <laughs> you better get in the studio. But Jersey has called me, I swear, every single day in January. I think you literally call me every day. But that was my motivation, you know? So we can piggyback off of each other like, okay, what did you accomplish today? What you doing tomorrow? You know, I'm around other people who are not in that same mindset. And they're cool. They're cool to be around those my friends. But they're not going to understand the stress that I go through. They're not going to understand like, oh my gosh, I, I don't want to get up today and choreograph. They're just going to be like, okay, do it tomorrow. Jersey going to be like, are you dumb? Get up. <laughs> and start choreographing. So it's very important. It's very important for your mental health, especially because life yeah. is stressful. Absolutely. And it's straight up stressful. <laughs> Being around like-minded individuals, I feel like is the key mm -hmm. to definitely kind of get into the next stage. You know, and a lot of people may be on here right now that maybe look for validation. Again, I say this all the time from friends, from family members, you know, from people that are the closest to you. But yeah. some it's gonna be the strangers that actually watch out and actually support your material and you support your content and support your work ethic the most, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's look so from, true. And from people that are maybe necessarily close to you, but just tap into people that are like-minded individuals that aren't necessarily next to you that you can grow with. You understand? Yes. Yeah. And you said it right there, growth. Where you want to be around people that you can learn from so you can grow. You can be around amazing people, but maybe they're great at what they do and you you can't relate to that. So, you know, they could teach you something about what they're doing, but it doesn't it doesn't help you grow, you know? Like I have friends who I have dope friends. Okay, one's gonna be a lawyer, one's gonna be a nurse, but they don't know what I go through as a dancer. So they can't relate to that, you know, and I can't they can't help me grow in that aspect. But I could learn a little bit about law and about I don't know, fixing a womb or something, but that's about it. <laughs> well, that's absolutely important. And I feel like that's a great segue into like you have your business, right? Mm -hmm. How important is it for you to know when it's time to expand in your business? Mm. Like a lot of times as business owners, we can get comfortable. Mm -hmm. Or just I, artists, we can get comfortable with, you know, how do we know when it's time to expand and start to really challenge ourselves? Very good question. And also the other side of that is some people, they expand too early. So Ooh. I... Okay? okay. I would say the best time to expand is when there is a demand for it. So, for example, I'm going to, um, instead of using dance, I know like me, you were dancers, but I'm going to use product wise. Someone who is selling lashes, like they want to sell lashes. You're going to start off with three different pairs of lashes, see how it does. People are like, oh my God, it's amazing. It sells out. You add another two pairs. Then you're saying, I'll dibble dabble into some hair. How the hair does well. You know, you move on like that. Imagine being a new business owner and you're like, okay, I'm going to open up shop. I'm going to sell lashes, hair, uh, flat irons, this, that, that. And I'm going to sell clothes and I'm going to sell shoes. I'm gonna, they're going to be like, child, I don't even know who are you. <laughs> you know, it's too much for people to take in. So that's already too much. Aside from financially, that's a lot. And then also with the getting comfortable, people get, I hate to say it, but people get bored right you want to continue to evolve with the world so if you're just like hey i do this and i do this only like come on like i teach classes but let's say if i was only teaching hills classes and that's what i stayed with forever and if people are like okay we've seen you a million times you teach twice a week this other person teaches twice a week and okay, okay that's it no now i do privates i do choreography i do this i do that what you want you want TikTok? you want challenges yes. you want support? You got to give the people what they want. So it's always fresh. It's always new. You want to stay relevant. You don't just want to be a trend that passes by the wind. <laughs> you want to stay relevant, which is why, which I've said before, it's important to have a brand. Because when you have a brand, there's so many umbrellas you can have under that brand, as opposed to just, I teach. Yes, everybody teach at this point. <laughs> Listen. There's definitely no criteria with teaching anymore, and I can't wait to get that conversation. <laughs> right. 
All right, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm very confused about. And, but, no, we're going to tap into, though, Naima, everything that you just said is 100% facts, right? And you got to make sure that you just do the work. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So you can't expand if you're not even prepared to expand, right? Absolutely. So the timing has to be right, and you got to meet the demand of whatever. And then you have to make sure you have the staff to meet that demand. Because oh. you understand, you can start kicking out, and then you're like, oh, I can't even keep up. You know, because uh, you mm -hmm. know, that happened to us before, where now it's overwhelming, and it's like, oh, I don't even have enough staff to man all of this. That is true. So let me, let me speak on the expansion of a team, because... Sometimes, and I'm, I, and I'm guilty for this, wanted to do everything myself. But once you see there's a demand for things and you start to realize that, okay, I wear many hats in what I do. Once you start realizing that you're wearing this one hat and you're kind of like just settling, like you're kind of like, okay, I'm not giving 100% no more. I'm giving like 80 and I'm giving 80 here and 40. You need help because you should be given 100% in all that you can do. So for me, I have to choreograph for my class. That has to be 100%. If I'm sending out emails, they have to be on time. That's 100%. Now, if I start doing, okay, I'm doing tutorials, I'm doing this, I'm selling clothes, I'm doing this, and then my choreography starts to diminish to 50%, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> People are going to be like, well, then I'm not coming to your class, and then the whole brand crumbles. So at that point, you tell yourself, okay, what is it that I have to do? What is it that I can't attend to that I'm given only 50%? Then you hire <laughs> someone to give the 100 But also on the flip side, don't start a business, a business today and say, you know what? I'm just going to hire everybody because then you're going to run out of money. Okay. And then you don't want to spread yourself too thin. Sometimes you start hiring everybody. I got a social media team. I got a marketing team. I got an account. And then it's just like. And you don't even know your own brand. How you do you start hiring? And people are like, so tell me about the website. You're like, I don't know. I just eat. Tell us what I do. And, I don't, and you don't even know what's going on in your own business. Not tapped in. Ah, not even you definitely preaching to the choir, but I got to get Mr. Phil right in the building. Yes. So definitely go ahead and, and let everybody know where they can find you. And let's, you know, go ahead and plug your class that you got coming up on Wednesday. Listen, listen. first of all, I'm teaching a lot this week. I'm teaching Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. But Monday, yes. Tuesday is sold out. Those classes are sold out. Don't even hit okay. me up. Okay. Wednesday, I am teaching a Valentine's Day class with Night Vibes at Lotus. We are dancing to Skin by Rihanna. Riri, please, when I post a video, do not block it because you've been blocking the promos, um, girl. But it's going to be sexy. Well, <laughs> she's trying it. Promo that she's going to block the video. How is that any different? We're going gonna, we gonna to finesse. Everybody in the class make noise. <laughs> We're going to figure it out. But <laughs> um, <laughs> dancers got tricks up their sleeves, okay? But I'm teaching Wednesday. It is from 6 to 8. You guys can check it out at lotusrecreate.org. You can sign up there or send an email at info at lotusrecreate.org. You know, make sure y'all watch the video do that. But you guys can find me on here on Instagram at Squats and Splits, also at House of Pumps. And House of Pumps has a brand new website that I designed myself. Yes, you know, I didn't hire somebody. I tried to figure it out. And it's www.thehouseofpumps.com. So on there, you can sign up for class. I have tutorials and stuff. And I got something coming. I ain't going to say what it is, but I got something coming. Well, you got, are you cooking something up? Oh, I am. Oh, what's in the kitchen? Don't worry about it, but it's coming. So, you know, I don't like to jinx stuff because then you get excited and you're like, I'm embarrassed, but it's coming. I'll be waiting. And so is everybody on this line, including Phil Wright, who's going to hold you. So I will see you later, Naima. Appreciate yes. it. Yes. Uh, and we'll definitely talk soon. Everybody, it's your girl, Naima. Bye. <laughs> All right, y'all, the, the moment that we've all been waiting for, Mr. Phil Wright, we're going to get him on the live, but make sure y'all tap in with Naima. She's super dope. Um, she teaches his classes, and she also works for Night Vibes, and she's the Morning Vibes Coordinator at Lotus. So please tap in with her because she is the truth. She's hilarious as hell, and she knows the quality and the fundamentals of dance, okay? Some qualifications in order to teach. Let's get Mr. Phil Wright. What's going on, everybody? What's up, bro? What's going on? What's going on? We got Phil right on the live, everybody. Welcome <laughs> to the breakdown, bro. <laughs> How's everybody doing? What's going on, man? I'm sorry. I'm a little winded, but I've been traveling lately, so, you know. Man, you be out here working. The hardest man in the show. 
<laughs> all right, so all this working man is show business. So we definitely gonna get into all of that. Man, we got Mr. Phil right on the live. Um, producer, actor, co international choreographer. Come on, someone that I've looked up to for a little bit. So shout out to you for being on here. <laughs> right. uh, man, let's kind of walk the people back through the process, man. Because I know a lot of people just want to even just understand the journey. I see even some of my students are on here, my past students, some some people that could happen, you know, there's a lot of people that I want to tap in. How did you get into dance, man? Bring us through that process. Wow. Uh, I mean, I started dancing at a very, very early age. I started dancing at the age of nine, bro. A lot of people don't know that. Um, started dancing at nine. And then I sort of got too cool for school, started going to high school and started playing sports. And I was in the marching band. And, you know, I, I think those journeys actually helped me out um, because my musicality is A1, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, like, <laughs> You know, learning those uh, those things in music class kind of helped me and benefited me till today. Um, and then, it, you know, eventually fell back in love with dance uh, in my senior year of high school and then sort of started teaching at local dance studios. Then ended up dancing for a, a local dance group called Live in Color. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they, they were one of the first ones to premiere on um, ABDC, America's Best Dance Crew. Okay. So, yeah, so uh, they they premiered there, and um, I was a part of the group. I didn't, uh, I wasn't on the show, but I was a part of the massive group that we had. And then, um, you know, just kept working at it. Um, you know, ended up choreographing for Miami Heat. And a lot of people don't know, but I get a lot of my skill from teaching kids, you know, having patience with kids. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's huge, you know. Um, and a lot of what I've learned throughout. When you got into dance, you said uh, senior year. Bring, just bring us back through that process because you know you've done so much. But I want to make sure you can walk everybody through that process. So senior year, when you actually that local dance school, you developed your craft just by like teaching kids more. Is what you were saying? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Now, did you? How was your training process like? Uh, even just leading up to your senior year into wanting to go ahead and teach. What was your training like? Well, I was a street dancer, so I, I never grew up in a studio. We didn't have, like, conventions that we go to and stick our name, our, our numbers on our chest and all of that stuff. It was never that. It was never that at all, you know. So, um, you know, at first, it was a side hustle, you know, and Never knew really what I was getting myself into. I was just like, you know, trying to put crumbs together and, you know, make it to the next day. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, we're talking about Miami. So all of, I grew up in the Miami base area, like old school, early 90s, uh, late 80s vibe. And, um, you know, my, my skill and tactics come from my personality. You know, um, I tend to be a very likable guy, a very friendly guy, very funny, goofy, and attracting the kids. Once I have the kids' attention, I tend to win over the parents 10 times over, you know. So, and little that people know, you know, kids, the way they attend to you are different from the way that adults tend to you, you know. I can t start teaching this eight-year-old, and I can have, you know, I can have income for the next eight more years because their parent, tr their parents trust me so much. With yes. Them. You know what I'm saying? So um, a lot of my skill level came from psychologically winning over the parents first and letting them understand that, hey, your, your child is safe with me. They're going to have fun time. You can go and run your errands. And when they can, when you come back, they'll you know what I mean? So, um, and and sort of, and, you know, I, I've, I've developed a, a skill level to where it's been on the highest level for a very, very long time when it when, when we're talking about kids, you know what I mean? Man, that's super dope, and I feel like you just gave away some gems just now. Yes! Because a lot of dancers do not understand that in order for you to even have longevity, it starts with teaching. 
You know what I'm saying? Because then you always have a career no matter where your career ends up because you can always go back into tapping into the network that you built with your students, you understand? So in addition to building your craft, you were able to just kind of sustain an income stream that's now something that you can look towards and not feel like, oh my God, what's my next check coming from? Because a lot of times dancers are always worried about, where's my next check, what's the next gig, what's the, but you gotta understand the business and, and that's just being a good person sometimes. Yeah. And just that's where, it. that's where it's it you know what I mean? If you, if you, if you negate that or oversee that, you know, um, the the money aspect or whatever, you know, sometimes more than likely, if you chase something, you really ain't gonna really achieve it. You know what I mean? You always, for me, I always started with a smile, and I was I was always appreciative, no matter if it was fifty people in my class, <clears throat> if it was my class. That's the only, the people that you see with massive numbers and whatever this and that, they started somewhere. They had two people in that class, maybe not even people showing up. Bro, I've had classes that I've had set up for, flyers out, sent flyers out, and no one show up, you know? So when you experience those things that happen in your career first, you start to value every single person that walks in the door. So when you have two people now instead of zero, it's like, let's turn up. You know what I'm saying? Let's turn all every now the appreciative market high. Now, now you know what that value is and you treat everyone like a superstar when they walk through that door. And then and then talk to us about just even the longevity in that because you teach uh Phil. It's looking like you're getting. I hope the Wi-Fi is going out. Can y'all see us? I can see you. Okay. Um, the longevity in that, because once you know how to sustain and survive off of one student, then everything else after that is just bonus. <laughs> you understand? And when you've been able to be like, yo, I'm used to having four or three people showing up to my class for the past four years, and I still stood my course. That in the fifth year or whatever year it is, that when now you have a hundred people, all of this is just extra because you've been able to sustain yourself for that long period of basically nobody showing up, but you just putting in that effort. So, man, I appreciate you just giving even just that gem right there. Because a lot of times, I, you know, I, I, you know, I'm a choreographer out here in New York City too, and I deal with a lot of people too. That because I have a school, and people ask me how we able to do this, <laughs> and I'm like, because I actually just tapped in with the youth, and I actually was a good person, and people looked out for me. I, one of the people that I happen to be teaching just happened to be someone that worked at HBO, the parents, and they happened to give us a sponsorship, and then it just goes, and it goes, and it goes, but when you're a good person, I promise you, everything definitely falls back into place. Um, now, jumping into a different topic real quick, Phil, but thank you for that, man. Um, how serious is dance competition? Right, you're a choreographer, uh, and you know, just choreographers all over New York and LA, wherever. How serious is competition, and how do you what advice would you give to dancers in regards to being in you know, competitive mode? And I come from a very competitive environment, uh, where they, they didn't give out medals or trophies or anything like that. You didn't have to go to a ballroom and stick a number on your chest to compete. We competed on the tennis court down the street, you know what I mean, with our boom box, basing whatever kind of music you had, you know what I mean? Competition will always be a part of human nature because that's what we naturally do. We compete against each, against each other. Now, there's healthy competing, and then there's unhealthy competing. Mm -hmm. Unhealthy competing is when you're putting the next man down, and you're putting the next competitor down, when you realize, when you should realize that that person is in the same boat as you, everyone, everyone wants to win, man. Everyone wants to win. No one wants to be second best. Let's be honest. Yes. That's a fact. Okay. No one wants to be second best. Everybody wants to be yes. what they do. You know what I mean? And at least for me and my ambition, as, as far as where I've come from, that's what I was growing up to be, to think. You know what I mean? You get on and you put on your 110%, you put your boots to the ground, you go to work. You know what I mean? So 
for me, there's always going to be competition, but I've never, ever, ever frowned upon my competitor. You know, I've always, you know, I let's just say, let's just say auditions, for example. You get into the audition room and you, you know, yo, what's up? What's up? What's up? Okay, what's up? How you doing? Da 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 da. When that music cut on, everyone's dead to me. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm I'm burning a hole in the floor. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm burning a hole in the floor. You better watch out because these flames get lit. Okay. Now, <laughs> the music cut off. Hey, you want to lift to the crib, whatever this and that, da, 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 because it's all love at the end of the day. It's healthy, competitive nature. And that's something that from my environment, I'm I'm born and raised Miami, Florida, which my high is 152nd Street. So, you know, I where I come from, you know, it it was we came off very vicious, but you know, you see people with goals in their mouth, pants sagging down to their behinds, you know, tank tops, flip flop wearing guys, you know what I mean? And we will always be in this competitive nature where we look so ferocious, but in reality, we're loving, kind people. You know what I mean? Every, everyone wants just to make it. Everyone just trying to make it out the crib. You know what I'm saying? So competitive nature is always going to be around. It just depends on how you utilize that nature. And if you do it the correct way, you'll start to gain respect from the people that you've been competing with from years and years to come. Yes! That's a fact. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta start charging on here. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> all right, he's dropping gems definitely is an unhealthy way and definitely a competitive way. Because I feel like if you're not competing, especially like even with yourself, sometimes you gotta tap into like I gotta be a better version of what I was though. If you just get lazy if there's no competition in the room, if, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? So but it's not even it's not even about you competing against each other. It's almost like motivation. You know what I mean? It's like years ago, years ago, before I even was even put on, I I, I kind of, my friends were dancing for like these award shows and whatnot. And I had I had not done anything. And I'm sitting in Miami and my two friends, I, I'll never forget Jake Kodish and Calvin Hodge was on uh, MTV Awards. They was dancing for Rihanna. Calvin was dancing and Jake had a solo at the beginning of the opening show. I'm sitting, I'm looking at myself. I'm like, what am I doing, bro? What am I doing? You know? And there's nothing towards them, but that was the, the spark and motivation that I needed to get my, my butt to get to LA, to do whatever I need to do. It's those, that is the competing nature that you want to spark a plug. You don't want that, you know, oh, I want them to sprain their ankle and Nancy Kerrigan type vibe. You know what I mean? You don't want that, you know? But those are the two guys that kind of helped me like, wait, what am, wait, what's going on? What am I doing? What, why am I, why am I being complacent here? Let me do something. You know what I mean? And that's what I'm talking about when I mean competitive nature. Definitely. Man, I, I like to be the weakest person in the room because then I know I'm going to be learning. I like the one that's the less educated, the one that's the least richest. Because if you know that's the only thing that you can learn, learn, learn in that room, you know what I'm saying? So I definitely feel like that's just a part of even being competitive because you just want that fight to get better. So I definitely appreciate that analogy. Now, you said you watched somebody on TV dancing at the MTV Awards. What was your first, and that was a spark for you, what was like your first break? Like, aha, I caught on something right now. And I feel like this is like a aha moment as a dancer, like you actually hit something. Well, I mean, I realized, hey, my my guy Charles is in the building, my man Chuck. <laughs> uh, I'm supposed to be teaching with him in this uh, following next New York. So shout out to Chuck, my man. Um, so now, um, look, uh, what did it for me was in I. I I had already realized in Miami that I had something going. I was just like, yo, um, you know, I had, when I started choreographing for the Heat, I started making a name for myself, you know. Um, and when I started doing these award shows, the, you know, the Miami, they usually have Latin Billboard Awards. So mm -hmm. when I started dancing for all these Latin artists or whatnot, and I didn't have to audition anymore. It started to click like, oh, okay, all right, well, they, 
soap or something like that or whatever the case is. So that was that was sort of my ooh, okay. I think I could do something. Now, when I moved to LA, that spark didn't come for a very long time. <laughs> you know, that, that spark was not even there for a very, very long time because when I moved to LA, I didn't book a job until like two years later. You know. So I was out there struggling with my then girlfriend, now wife. We out there living in the car, her car actually, with all of our stuff in there, you know, and at that point, it wasn't about booking a job. It was about survival. <laughs> so I had to get my coins together. I had to figure out what I wanted to do. And I almost, a lot of people don't know, but I almost stopped, stopped dancing entirely. You know, um, I, I started working for LA Fitness. I was just like, you know what? I'm done. But then I got motivated again and inspired again. And that's how it works, man. That's just how it works. Damn, that's that's crazy. But so it took you two years to actually two years, man. Two years. And listen, let me tell you, it two months is a very long time. You know what I mean? Two months, two years without booking a single job. And to how, be on, how old were you? If you could give us just an age, just how old were you at that time? Do you remember? I was, bro. I was twenty six years old. Mm. Twenty six. And a lot of people right now are like, "Oh man, I'm I'm so I'm so I'm so late I'm so late in the game." I, da, da, da. Bro, I moved to LA when I was 26, bro. 26. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, at that point, it's like I should be talking about my retirement fund. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah, that's dope, though. But 26, I guess you said nope. Nope. You definitely gonna do it. But the biggest sacrifice, that was the biggest sacrifice I had made in my entire life, just giving up everything. Because I had it going in Miami. I was good. And I gave it all up to sleep on the floor with roaches crawling around, like with my, my friends jumping over me trying to get to their bed. You know what I mean? With me and my girls sleeping on a blow-up mattress. Not even. Sleeping on the wooden floor, you know, in North Hollywood. Gave it all up for that. But once again, no risk it, no biscuit. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, hundred percent facts, man. No, no risk, no gain in that, man. And, and it definitely paid off in two months. Like you said, it's a long time. And the fact that you stayed the course two years and still didn't hold down, you definitely killed that. Clap it up. <laughs> Look at where you at right now, man. Got shows on Disney Channel alone, but we ain't even get over there yet, man. We're gonna definitely get into Fam Jam in a second. But, man, you're inspiring the audience right now. They all saying, wow. They said, that makes me feel so much better. They saying, how are you? They saying, wow. They saying, proud of you, bro. That shows how bad you wanted it. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of people definitely showing love in the building right now, man. Now, let's tap into, let's tap into just black and dance, right? Uh, black men and dance. Let's get into that real quick. Um, just, and, and and just making that segue, like you're now moving into corporate dance because there's, there's really two difference, right? There's, there's like, there's really just, you know, being a dancer as a backup dancer where you just kind of just do the audition process, you get casted, they give you the rules, they, whatever, you get booked, whatever the case may be. Then there's actually working with corporate on the, on, we're, we're, we're dealing with shows and dealing with, with sponsorships and dealing with TV networks and that's a whole different monster. Now, my school used to be sponsored by HBO two years running. So I used to get invited to go to the film festival every year. So that was like a little extra perk as being like a, I guess like dancer slash, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call it, just knowing the right people, uh, you know, hey, uh, yeah, definitely, man. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. The only school in Brooklyn to be sponsored by HBO, by the way, but uh, you know what I'm saying? But it, it's just the, the simple fact of being a black man navigating in that field is difficult because for me, my experience, because I feel like you're screaming already because you're a dancer. Somebody takes dancers. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Then it's like you're black in the industry where they're all maybe not necessarily our complexion uh, and they don't understand our struggles. So how is it for you navigating through working with these different corporations, you know, just being a black man that's trying to do different things? I work harder than everybody in the room. I work, I yeah. work everybody in the room and I don't second guess it. I don't. I don't second question it. I don't give it. I don't give it power. 
I don't give them power. And uh, I my my voice changes. It gets very authoritative. You know, I I I speak and I walk with confidence. Um, I mean, we we know what the game is. We know what it is. You know what I mean? Like, I can sit here and piss pow all day and talk about all the adversities that we've been through or whatever. But what is that going to change? You know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm not about to do that. I'll be the front runner in changing that game. You know what I mean? And yeah. you know, for me, I talent for me is great. I, I embody that here and there, but hard work is from top to bottom, bro. I mean, I will outwork anybody to this day. And I and I yeah. feel everyone to feel that way. Too. You know me, what I mean? Let me ask you this. Does does talent outweigh hard work or does hard work outweigh just being talented? And you're gonna get me kicked off this live, man. <laughs> a lot of people are gonna be mad at me when I say this. <laughs> Listen, hard work beat talent any day. All me. day. Yes. All day. For me, all day, every day, talent, uh, talent cannot match it because I've seen some of the most talented people sit on their couch right now eating cheese doodles and not doing nothing with themselves. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they're blessed to have that talent, yes. But I, I will run circles around, and just as hard as I work, being that I work so hard, I end up gaining so much more and so much respect because naturally us human beings love the underdog. We love the underdog. We love we love to see people win who don't really have it at first. You know what I mean? You watch movies. Every movie is about an underdog overcoming an obstacle. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I always considered myself an underdog, which I, I clearly was. I, I couldn't do backflips. I couldn't I couldn't tut. I couldn't be boy. I couldn't do any that. Any of that. But I had a business mindset and I knew I was gonna work every bro. So did I make every audition? No. Because I wasn't the most talented. You know what I mean? I wasn't I wasn't hitting and boom and you know what I mean? Da, 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 da. But guess what? Soon enough, years to come, I ended up running the audition. Let's go. Yes. And, and right? You feel like I was looking up to you. Now you got an audition for me. Uh, you know, like <laughs> okay. That you know, that is definitely and regardless if you still feel like you're better or not, your business mindset or your work ethic didn't get you the way you needed to be because you were relying too much on your talent and you didn't work as hard as you were supposed to. You know what I'm saying? So that definitely happens, man. You're going to start dropping gems on your uh, charging people. Uh, so, so, man, let's get into Disney's fam jam, man. Talk about leveling up and just being a boss and just doing something with Disney Channel. Okay, that's epic. I. Right? Dancers, you know, there's a few Debbie Allen, you know, J Lo that really level up and really get to those point of views. And I definitely see you in that transitional phase, man. Talk to us about Fan Jam. Well, you know what? It, it's, it's very rewarding because I think someone told me the other day, and I had to actually look it up. I think I am the first black male to develop a dance show for Disney Channel. I think we were the first. Oh. <laughs> Black coach to bring down. We celebrate first. A lot of first sight. Yeah. yeah. To, to sell, to be able to sell that IP to a major global um, company um, is like, wow. You know what I mean? And, and we're not talking about the coin. We're not talking about accolades or anything like that. But just be able to be able to sit in the room. And, the, and you know where it hit me is when I sat down at the big oval table and all the executives were in there, all of the executives. And it was close to anywhere between like 40 to 45 people in there just listening. And they had to listen to me, you know? And that is so powerful. That was so powerful. And I can't tell you, at the time I was nervous, but you couldn't tell because once again, my voice was authoritative. I walked with a certain walk. I talked a certain Now when I walked, out, I collapsed on the floor and probably 
<laughs> but but I held my own because too it was a make it or break it was a do or die you know what I mean? a do or die and I knew I had to sell my product and make them believe that this was an ongoing running show and thankfully we got the green light and um, you know that was actually if, for the people who don't know that was actually a dance class I had developed and I had, I had done that, and I traveled the world, and I had, you know, took that to different places. I actually came to New York, and I taught a couple of parent jam classes. It was actually called the Parent Jam. And then I videoed it and everything, and a lot of people were not – I was a kid dancing with the parent. Okay, let's get – and I didn't create that. However, I did make it a thing. The way it was okay to film parents who could not dance or could dance with at the time videos were going viral with kid dancers being awesome and great and I was the one that kind of went against the mold but took the trend took the trend and went against the mold and created my own brand which is called the parent jam which is trademark by the way and I had a producer come to me, approach me, sent their offer, say, hey, I think this we could we could do some things. We worked together. And nine months later, uh, shout out to Irene Dreyer. She got me uh, into Disney uh, Disney Channel offices, and then I sold the IP to Disney Channel. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. And, and again, that's just tapping in with just the right people, right? And just being able to just work hard and making sure people understand that you're a hard worker. Because people are not going to put their, their, their name on the line and even hook you up with somebody if they feel like you can't even follow through with a task that is minimal, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? So people don't even understand that. Like, I'm not, I'm qualified, but maybe your work ethic isn't good enough, so people don't want to put their name on the line. You know what I'm saying? So that just shows your character all around, man. So don't. Are, are you likable? Are you presentable? Are you marketable? Are you worth my time? You know, are you worth this Starbucks lunch that I'm going to set out with you and talk to you about this idea that I think because I know the right people that can get you in the door? You know what I'm saying? So it goes a long way, man. Definitely goes a long way, bro. Definitely. Man, I got to ask you this. If you got to pick one to save your life, man, out of dancing, choreographing, or acting, out of all three of those things, which one, if you had to pick one to save your life? Because uh, you know I'm in this transition period. I'm, I'm transitioning into acting now. So I have this newfound love for film and acting now. And mm -hmm. it's, it's tough, man. Um, my first love will always be dance. Okay? Dance <laughs> is everything for me so if i had to pick it would be dance yes so you you like dancing more than teaching i that because when it comes to teaching i learn more while i teach than i dance hmm. me is a joy that you can't teach definitely definitely isn't it isn't it like the dopest when you just when you teaching the steps and they just and you be like oh i didn't even hear that beat uh, like, <laughs> because they they start doing their own thing to it and you know what i'm saying and you start to you start to even the, the way that you start dancing is becoming better because you applying some of what the students is showing you kind of you know what i'm saying so there's definitely a lot that goes into that man but uh, yeah man, you dancing for me man that was my first love man i can't like for me, dancing is it. It will always be it for me. And um, now when I when I segue into teaching, I ended up learning a lot while teaching. I actually learned so much while I was teaching kids and uh, other students or whatnot. And um, those moments I can't take back either, you know what I mean? And choreography, you know, allowed me to showcase my visual thoughts and visual creative process. You know, um, and for me, you can't get to those steps without dancing. You know what I mean? You can't understand how to flip a burger until you flipped it. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you can't tell, you can't dictate or anything unless you've done it yourself. So for me, dancing is it for me, bro. All right, man. It's a feel right. Yeah. Y'all wanted to know. Yeah, I know now. Feel right. It's a dancing true to heart, man, forever. <laughs> man, when, whenever you're in New York, man, you definitely got to pull up to the studio, man, whenever you are in New York. Um, um, bro, anytime. <laughs> Set something up, man, because you know it's all about you know. I feel like New York lost its soul a little bit. Um, you know what I'm saying? It definitely did. You know, I'm not gonna say a little bit, a lot. <laughs> like it's not, it's just not there no more. I feel like a lot of it fell flat because I feel like there's a lot of people that just teach, and the, the, a lot of the choreographers, the, the core ones, don't necessarily want to teach more move to LA or whatever the case may be. I just feel like it's it's been a, a, a void, and for New York to be like one of the birds of hip hop, it definitely, it needs to, we definitely got to get the culture right again. So I definitely. I feel like everyone's lost their soul though, man. Every, everywhere. I mean, I think this pandemic has hit everyone hard. It's actually woke up a lot of people as well. You know what I mean? But as far as business is concerned and uh, creative processing and understanding, okay, what is this worth? Now everyone's questioning, okay, how is this going to benefit me? Now, you know, whereas before, oh, everyone going out there to the slums and just doing what they need to do and get whatever they need to get. But like now, now that the pandemic hit, it's like, okay, I'm risking this. When am I going to benefit from it? And now it puts everyone at a pause. And that's why everyone's like, you know, okay, well. And that's where you see the soul just kind of, the hip hop, the, 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 the dancing uh, inspirations are just, uplifted it's not it's not as frequent the frequencies are off right now you know but i want to say i want to say even before the pandemic it was a little bit off just with just with the way that i just feel like everyone does things for the grant now right just do it for the grant like, it's, like it's, just, it's just the soul i don't know i feel like the, that a lot of that was gone just towards the ending not always just recently right before pandemic but you know i I'm just trying to really be a part of the, the new wave of people that want to bring it back and bring it back to real performance and just excellence. You know, Michael Jackson and James on it. People that I look MC handled, I could really dance their asses off for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like hundred percent. And like for me, I catch myself living back in my day or whatever. But I have to realize and come to the realization that there's a new era. You know what I mean? And that's how you know you're getting old. <laughs> A fact. Yeah. <laughs> a fact. So you get old when you start calling these new artists, man. They ain't got it like so and so back in the day. They ain't got, you know. And guess what? Our parents were saying the same thing about us when we was growing up with our people who we thought was the ghosts. Gotcha. Because before, before there was an MJ, that was a Nat King Cole. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? So, and before that, it was, it was a, you know, it was so many legends before then. You know what I mean? It's just a, a trend in effect that I have to be, we have to be mindful of and keep the respect in line to where my daughter may grow up with, I don't know, whoever it is, Migos, little baby, I don't know. I hear you. Look, but it is. So when, when those are the dance icons to her dog, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. so I where it just becomes like I feel like people don't respect who Debbie Allen is. I don't know, I don't know. you know. So I feel like we just got it out there just a little bit, even because I teach a lot of students now, like in their early twenties, and they be looking at me like, "Who the hell is Debbie Allen?" And I'm like, <laughs> you know. So I feel like there's a lot that's lost because everyone's stuck on like TikToks and stuff, and be trying to be viral and not really like studying like who Lorian Gibson is and who you know Fred Gatson is. Like so, like just knowing who the people that really pioneered the game that worked with Beyonce before Beyonce was even Beyonce. You know what I'm saying? So people just need to do that research. That's all. But you know, oh. hopefully, that. That's facts, bro. That's facts. No, definitely. Man, so tell the people what you got coming up and anything you want to plug, you know, on your, your, your you know, what's going on right now. Guys, man. Uh, wow. Um, well, um, everyone can tune in on uh, now. Now Disney's Fam Jam is on now Disney Plus. So you can stream it now. You can go on uh, Disney Plus yeah. and stream Disney's Fam Jam. Um, 
Also, I just finished filming a movie with Disney Channel as well. Uh, they they did a remake called uh, Under Wraps. It's a decom. Um, it's a remake of the original movie called Under Wraps, um, where three kids stumble across a mummy. And yeah, I know that movie. <laughs> yeah. We... I'm. I actually play the mummy. I play Harold. Oh, you play Harold in the movie, bro? Yo, we gotta clap it up for that. <laughs> Man, I was really old for real. This is really crazy. Like, because I know exactly who you're playing, and I'm ex actually mad hyped to watch that. When does that come out? That is coming out this year. Um, sometime closer. It's a Halloween movie, so it will probably do promo anywhere between August, September, October-ish. And then, um, yeah, that's when everything starts to drop. But, yeah, man, now, now – You'll start to see a lot of acting stuff. I'm in school now, starting from ground zero again, continuously challenging myself and not only challenging myself, but my peers around me to elevate themselves better than who they are today. You know, um, if you've if you've danced at an award show, let's do a tour. If you don't done that tour, let's do a commercial. If we don't did that commercial, let's do a movie. If you don't done the movie, let's write a book. If you don't write a book, yes, okay, man. Let's elevate together. You know what I'm saying. So uh, that that's that's what I'm on. That's the frequency I'm on. You know, that's the vibe I'm on. And and um, you know, making sure that I, I continue to do that. So I'm back in class. I'm in acting class. I'm starting from ground zero. I'm in two classes a week now, and starting to do these self tapes and stuff like that. So now I'm taking acting a little bit more serious. Dancing, feel my love. You know, but dancing. My love, your love will always perpetuate uh, perpetuate you in the next atmosphere. Mm. Always get you there. Your talent is the only starting point of your job. You know, once you take that talent, boom. You know, and a lot of dancers, you know what I mean? Actors were dancers before. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of entertainers, a lot. You know what I mean? Um that's the segue I'm going into. And obviously, I'll still dance here and there, you know what I mean? But I'm trying to take this acting thing a little bit more serious. So now, you know, it is what it is. But that's what I got coming. <laughs> okay. Man, I think that might be just is my favorite thing about you because you love dance, but you're so much more than just a dancer. So, you know what I'm saying? That's what's dope. And that's why I even want you to be on the show because you're just multifaceted, man. That's what... That's what I. That's one of my takeaways from me. I started off as a dancer, but then I went into the school and I went to just do some. Went into just even the show and just you know what I'm saying just kind of just moving into different platforms and different avenues and different revenue streams. Okay, uh, like, <laughs> like I, I never. I and I tell this to Nayana, one of my online students right here. She's actually in this room right now. But I tell this to my students all the time. You never want. Don't never let anyone box you. Don't let anyone box you. And that's why I, I get afraid of that question of, oh, just dancing, dancing. No, I'm an entertainer, period. You know, wherever yeah. wherever the bag is, that's where I'm at. Where I'm getting coins, that's why. You know, I'm trying to elevate. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So um, I'm a, I'm a full-blown entertainer, and don't ever let anyone put you in a box because you're more than just one thing. You're, you're many, many different things. And you can accomplish anything that you put your mindset to. So don't let anybody tell you that you can't do anything. Or, oh, well, you're supposed to stay in your lane. What lane? Who lane? What? You you paved that lane for me? What lane? It's okay. No lane, buddy boy. You know what I'm saying? So don't don't let nobody, don't give them power, is what I told you last night. Don't give nobody power. You You embody that power. And you do whatever you need to do to succeed and making sure that you you work and you outwork everyone in the room. Listen, if you ain't taking that on gems, then you was not that you was not the grocery store. Uh like you know, because you definitely dropped them all for free, all right? And bro, it's percent facts. You gotta make sure you're able to reinvent yourself consistently especially as a dancer because dancer's job is very fickle you get a job one minute you do great then you sit down for another minute you said you took two years so now imagine if you had to kind of go back in that situation you got to wait two years you don't have to wait on two years you do this and 
this, we do this. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's man, just kind of, I only listen. I'm an actor. I'm a dancer. I'm a choreographer. I can teach. I have my online service. I got my stocks rolling. I got my real estate going. I got yeah. Look, I'm not just a dancer. You know what I'm saying? So, and everyone that's listening to this chat. Uh, you included. Everyone is so multi-skilled. It's ridiculous. You know what I mean? And if you want to master one skill, that's great. That's all power to you. You do that. You do that. But once you climb that mountain, you get to the top of that mountain, it's time to hop on another mountain and start climbing again. Okay. okay. So, you know, you, you, you got to... Never getting comfortable. Never getting comfortable. Always challenging yourself. You know what I'm saying? For me, challenges what life is about you know what i'm saying like that's what life is ultimately about it's about challenges and overcoming those challenges it's a new challenge okay i'm gonna do this acting thing all right i'm gonna try i'm gonna try i'm gonna try i'm so ambitious i ain't gonna stop until i get it <laughs> you know what i'm saying i ain't gonna stop until i get it now whether if i quit or do whatever that's my prerogative but that once again is my choice you know what I mean? so uh utilizing those choices and, and understanding that for you to even have a choice is such a blessing because there's a lot of people that, that would love to be in your shoes. Mm -hmm. to, to choices. So, yes. you know, bad together, man. Man, that's what it is. And that's what he said. So if he wasn't taking notes, you better go back and watch the replay. All right? Because there's a lot of gems in here. There's a lot of dancers in the building. I see a few dancers that I know already in the building tapping in. So make sure you just really take everything that was said and, and and put that upon your dance journey when the world opens back up. And even while the world is closed, how important is training, bro? Tell the people, you know, like you're a choreographer. How important is just staying up on your craft and just taking class and just studying the greats and doing all that? How important is that? Well, for me, having knowledge, knowledge plus talent equals, for me, perfection, but results you know knowledge plus talent equals results and for me with with knowledge i can better understand how to execute these moves i can look at i can look at replay and watch watch Loyan gibbs say okay she moved that way okay cool okay now she got a book okay cool frank gas okay he started off with okay for all look at all these other people that was behind him okay if you study these people and understand the way that they move and their success stories, you'll start to understand which way you need to go as well. Plus that with my talent is going to automatically equal results. So it's just so, it's so imperative to do your research and training. Training isn't only physical. Training is mental, emotional, spiritual. Do you meditate? Do you pray? I don't care what, who you believe in. I don't care what you do, whatever this and that. But are you manifesting your future? You know, manifestation is so, so, so important. And for me, I always, I always felt like I was going to end up somewhere, but never knew I was, where it was for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why, but I always, I'm going to end up, with, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do something, but I don't know what, it, what it's going to be. It's going to be something. Yo, now, now let me ask you this now. This might be a little controversial. But now, do, do you feel like everyone's not born to be a star? Like, let's just be real here. Like, do you feel like, <laughs> do you feel like some people are just born with it? Like, listen, it's just, you know, sometimes you just got to speak facts. You know, we can all train and do what we need to do to be the best versions of ourselves. But when it comes to the spotlight and only three can be chosen, is everybody born to be a star, Phil? <laughs> I can't, bro. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give you the most cliche answer. Yes, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because listen, once again, it goes back to choice. If you choose, if you choose to be in that position, then you have the power to become it. You know, um, I've seen some of the most introvert people become stars. 
Mm. A lot of other people, they don't. They're very into themselves. They're not yeah. social. They're not any of that. You know what I mean? But they find the joy in what they do in having that star quality to sustain that. You know what I mean? It's it lies in everyone. I know that's very very cliche when I say that, but. I really do mean that. Everyone is a star. And I know, like, we kind of joke around. Like, girl, girl, go, you know, go somewhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know we joke around with that. But seriously, it is. Like, everyone does. Everyone can be a star, man. It's, it's how strong is your belief system? I can sit up and say, this, this bad boy right here gives me energy. This right here gives me energy. And I can worship this and make me feel good. If I believe in that, so wholeheartedly, that's exactly what it's going to do for me. You know what I mean? So the the spirit doesn't come from this wall. The spirit comes within because I believe in it so deeply that no nothing else can deter me away from it. That's you know. Right. So that if you can trigger that in your body, in your mind, in your spirit, in your soul, you'll be you'll be the star that you're looking for. Yes! Okay, yo, Phil Wright is definitely the channel all the way. He's going to give you guys the answer we all want to hear, okay? <laughs> Listen, and you know what? It's 100% it's fact. I definitely feel like we all have a light that we don't tap into. You know, I heard Monica actually say the other day when she did her verse Brandy. She was like, I'm not the prettiest girl. I'm not the best singer. I don't think I'm the best nothing. But I tapped into something that I feel like we all have, and that made me prepare to have a career since I was 12, up until right now that she's 40. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and, it, and it really is true. Like, you don't have to be the best at anything that you do, but if you have a divine sense of, I'm going to make it at all costs, I definitely feel like success is going to just be a part of your DNA no matter what it is or who it is. You know what I'm saying? So, man, he was definitely 100% fact on that. But if Janet Jackson's coming tomorrow and she says she only won five dances, you know, I'm um, be and I'm <laughs> dead. <laughs> but it just may not be our season, right? It just may not be our season. It may not be your season. That's all it means. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Man, Phil, we could be on here all night, man. Appreciate you coming on and just tapping in with us and, and just keeping it real and dropping gems. Um, whenever you're in New York City, man, please tap in with us and come give our audience a little bit of what you do, man. Next week, we actually got Dee Woods from uh, back in the day, Danny K. I'm not sure if you know her, but she's teaching a class. And uh, a few weeks ago, we had Ray Ray from Mindless Behavior. I don't know if you remember him. With, with the braids but he's back into dancing and choreographing and we teamed up and we, we doing some stuff together too but you're just trying to get black people together and really taking this hip-hop thing you know you know back to and, and they they like us uh, you know like in terms of like you know like like you know deep deep train on the lorianne you know what i'm saying so she understands that boom cat boom you know what I'm saying that performance and that soul and that just trying to bring that back a little bit and less about the, the TikTok and more about the feeling that it does for us. You know what I'm saying? 100%. But, bro, appreciate you coming on. And do not be a stranger. The, the, the people is definitely going crazy. Layla just said, come to Lotus. Most definitely. Layla, we're going to definitely make that happen. All right? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to be in New York uh, next weekend. Um, I'm traveling. I'm teaching at several different studios. So if you want to go check that out, Go to my Instagram page uh, and just go to the tag section because there's so many studios posting so many flyers. So I'm going to be in New York next weekend. Maybe we can link up. Um, if you you out in New York, right? Yeah, you're in New York, yeah. Okay. So uh, maybe we can link up and whatnot. But next week I'm in New York. And then, and then weekend after that I'm in Texas. And then after that, so what? Um, Yo, stop working, bro. Come on. Yo, you can't even squeeze in time to be at Lotus. You got you run the whole tour. <laughs> and you know what? Look, that's on my own dime, man. That's on my own dime. And I ain't got to worry on nobody to, to tell me I can work or give me a, a paycheck. I go out there and hustle. Yeah. There's, there's this famous engine, uh, technical engine called Google. <laughs> <laughs> and I do my research. And I still to this day, and I will always continue to hustle. And that's what's 
bringing me the bag. So I don't, I, I won't ever stop doing that. So, but man, thank you. Thank you for having me, bro. Jersey, I appreciate you, man. Um, uh, congratulations to you and you, you, what you do. I've done my research. I, I went through your page. I saw everything that you're doing. You keep doing what you're doing. Keep bringing uh, people here. And I know that everyone that comes on here is inspirational, but you yourself is very, you're very, very inspirational yourself. And we, it would be dope if you just came on here and just speak. You know what I'm saying? And and give drop gems to everybody else. You know what I'm saying? So do, uh, nobody likes to listen when I talk. So I like to talk to y'all. All right, <laughs> man. I appreciate you, man. But uh, man, we gonna definitely connect. This is not gonna be the the first and last time we link up. We gonna anytime you got anything going on, please pull up on Black Culture and let us know what you got going on. We we family here, man. We, Black people united on here, bro. For sure. Well, thank you, man. Bye, everybody. I appreciate you guys listening. Jersey, All peace. All right, man. All right, everybody. Later. <laughs> All right, y'all. That was still right. Make sure y'all tapped in. All right. Listen, we're going to be people calling in. Three people calling in. Okay. No. It's not that type of show. There's nobody calling in here. It's only going to be DJ Little Man. Yes. Spin around. Get the sexy walk going. <laughs> All right. Squats and splits. Yes. And feel right. Yes. There's nobody else calling in. All right. So in terms of what we learned today, everybody, we learned to really be our best versions of ourselves. Challenge ourselves. Do not ever let nobody tell you can't do nothing. You don't have to be the best. What is the best anyways, right? Who's the best at anything? There's always somebody that's better than you. Just outwork everybody. No one's going to work harder than you. So the 23 people that's on this live, make sure y'all working hard. All right, I'm out of here. I appreciate y'all. Feel right. It was love. DJ Lil Man was love. Squats and splits. It's always love. I appreciate all y'all for tuning in and supporting. I am out of here. Peace.